So what I want to do here is introduce the Lambert W function. And one thing that I've noticed, at least for me and for some of the people that I know, is that special functions can, on the surface, seem a bit scary or a bit, a bit hard to, to deal with. And so what I want to do is take a somewhat circuitous route to introducing the uh, Lambert W function by looking at a few similar examples, sort of understanding why, why, do, why do we need this thing, where is it coming from, and how does it fit into our previous knowledge of functions. So for example, uh, once upon a time you might have been asked, um, here's, a, here's an equation, y squared equals x, solve for y. Okay. Yeah, in other words, we're saying that we have we have some equation here, and what we want to do is we want to solve for y. We want to isolate y as a function of x. And what we would have said is that okay, well, y squared equals x. Well, okay, I know how to I know how to invert that. I know how to isolate y. What do you do? You square root both sides. And when you take the square root, you can isolate y. You get y equal to plus or minus square root x. And Let's take a second to think about how, how strange this really is, right? I mean, squares, I, I know how to take the square of a number. If, if you give me 7, I'll say, okay, 7 square 7, you get 49. Easy. But the square root, I mean, if you give me 7 and you ask me for the square root of 7, uh, uh, well, may, maybe it's between 2 and 3, but beyond that, I mean, unless you start trying things out. You can't really calculate it, and so it's it's sort of weird. It's it's, it's almost unnatural, and then the only reason we introduce it is precisely because we want some inverse function. We want some way to undo this y squared over here, or this square up here, and so because of that, we have to introduce this funny this funny function called the square root. And and one of the one of the things about the square root is that if we want it, if we want it to be real, or if we want this value here to be real. We can only look at values from zero out to positive infinity, uh, and so, and so the the point being that when when we're we're kind of used to this idea of having to introduce weird functions in order to get the inverses of stuff, you know, the square root here being one one example. Uh, another example, uh, a famous example might be if I if I gave you the equation e to the y equals x, and I said all right. Really what I want here is I want to solve for y as a function of x. I want to invert this. Well, then what would you say? You would say, okay, well, uh, I know how to do that. You take the log of both sides. What happens? You take your log. You get y is equal to uh, log or, or natural log. Here, 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 here log is just natural log of x. Okay? And th this, again, is another one of those strange functions where uh, log of x is only defined from 0 out to positive infinity, um, and anything negative becomes complex valued. Um, and, and this is sort of something where the only reason that we introduce this is because we want some way of talking about um, the inverse of e. We want, we want some way to go between the two. Um, and this is sort of where the story of the Lambert W function comes in. because So for example, I might say, and this is going to look a little familiar. Here, here's an equation: y e to the y equals x. And now I want to get y as a function of x. I want to isolate the y here. And just looking at this, well, I'm not exactly sure how you would do that. I mean, you might think, well, I could try taking a log, but oh, you might try taking a log, which you could. Um, but uh, one of the problems would be that you still have this y out. You'd have a log y plus y equals x, and you haven't isolated y yet. So what do you do? You do what you did in the previous cases. Before we had this y squared equals x, what did we do? We had to invent a new function so that way we could invert it. We had to, we had to invent, an invent, invent an inverse function for it. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to say, I'm going to invent this new function and it's going to be called the Lambert W function. And it's going to be a little bit like log. So th these two equations are kind of similar. Here, 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 this y is kind of doing what this y is doing, but with a different, you know, different y out in front. And so it's going to be similar to log. Um, and that is bounded on the left. 
with some by by some funny value that maybe we'll explore a bit later. Um, but this is what we're doing. We're we're defining a brand new function, kind of like how we did up here, that solves this problem that that allows us to take y e to the y and invert it such that we can get y on its own as a function of x. So this this is this is what's going on here. This is how we define the Lambert W function. This is where it comes from, and this is where it gets its use because oftentimes you might come across equations that have weird factors like this that you'd really like to be able to solve algebraically, but using just ordinary elementary functions like e and log and, and square roots and all of that stuff, you're not able to solve it. And so that's that's why we invent this Lambert W function. Uh, and so now uh, what I want to do is just briefly look at a couple of examples and then maybe in some future videos I'll go into some more of the properties uh, of the Lambert W function because it is actually, uh, it, it, has, it has a lot of rich properties which are, which are really interesting and worth studying. But first, uh, let's solve a couple problems with it. Uh, let's actually see the usefulness of this thing. So for example, one equation that we might type, might, might want to solve is x e to the minus x equals minus 7. So what we would want to do is find which val what value of x solves this equation. Well, what do we know? We know that, and I'll write down this property from the other page, y e to the y equals x. And this is, the, the solution to this is y equals w of x. And so, and I'll, and I'll circle this because I, I like circling stuff. Um, yes, so this is this is super important. So this is our property, and so long as we can get this equation over here in the form of this, we know exactly how to go from that to some solution with the w function. So let's see. Well, we know we know we want to have the same thing going down out here as we have up in the exponential. Up here we have a minus x. Here we just have x. So uh, we got to get it in the same form. So what do we do? We multiply through by a minus one. So if we do that, we get minus x e to the minus x equals seven. Ah, and now we have this exactly in this form that we want right here. We have minus x minus x. That's our y. So this becomes minus x equals w of seven. Or in other words, x is equal to minus w of seven. Great, so we've solved our first equation using the Lambert w function. Now let's look at a second example. And, and this, this example being a little more sneaky than the first. So uh, I might, for example, now I'll, uh, I'll Let's make a little border here. So um, another equation that we might want to solve is something like this. x e to the x minus 7 e to the x plus 5 equals 0. Okay, great. This looks a little bit like what we want. So we know that we need to have, you know, some something e to the something equals a constant. And we almost have that here. We have an x e to the x, which is good. But we also have this minus 7 e to the x right here, which, which kind of messes up what we're going for. Um, and so it's not in that form. We can't use that property yet. But let's see if we can manipulate it a bit and see if we can force it into the right form. So what can we do? Well, we can pull out this e to the x, maybe move this 5 over here. Uh, so what happens? We get x minus 7 times e to the x equals minus 5. Minus 5. Okay. Well, we're almost there. We have something times e to the x, but what's going on here is different. Out in front we have x minus 7. In the exponential we have just x. So we've got to do one more thing to make this look the same. And what we're going to do is um, multiply both sides by e to the minus 7. So if we do that, if we do that, then x minus 7, e to the x minus 7 equals minus 5, e to the minus 7. Okay, and now we've got it, right? This right here is exactly of the same form as this up here. We have x minus 7 out in front, x minus 7 in the exponential, and some constant on the other side. 
So what does that mean? That means that we can solve for this thing and we get what? Well, our y is x minus seven. And what's it equal to? It's equal to Lambert w of minus five e to the minus seven. And then we just add seven to both sides and, we, and we've isolated x. Uh, so I think this is where I wanna stop here. Re re really the purpose here is just to kind of introduce what's going on with the Lambert w function and show a few examples with it. Uh, in the next video, I'll go a bit more into the properties of the Lambert w function and show really just how much you can actually do with it. So, uh, so I hope to see you there.